This is a robot hand that I can control with my real hand. This project is something I've wanted to replicate ever since seeing it done on Mythbusters as a kid. They made theirs so fast that it caught an arrow. They powered theirs with something like this. It's a rotary air vane. It works similar to a pneumatic cylinder, but instead of pushing a piston linearly, it turns the shaft 90 degrees. They used it to close all five fingers at once, and that's where mine differs. I can control each finger individually. Each finger has its own pneumatic cylinder, valve, and switch. The fingers work by running a cable along one side, similar to a tendon in your hand. I had never made an animatronic before, so it was a super fun challenge. To start, I welded a tower to support the hand using some laser cut steel. And I used some motorcycle chain for the fingers. I kept things simple by keeping all the fingers the same length. I added these bars to guide the string and also limit each link from bending backwards. This is so cool. Studying screenshots from the Mythbusters episode saved me a ton of time in prototyping by telling me where to route the cables and put the little bars. To return the hand to an open position, I tried using rubber bands like they did on Mythbusters. I ordered several different types of elastic, but the bands kept catching on themselves and not letting all of the digits curl. So I switched to springs. And just like the elastic, I bought many types of cords and cables to try for the tendons. I used a nylon cord for a bit, but the hand turned out to be pretty weak. And I think the reason is this cord is stretching. See, when I pull up on the finger, the cylinder doesn't move, but the cord stretches. I tried using steel cable, but it was too big to route inside the finger under the bars. If I had more time, I would have used two or three strains of a smaller steel cable per finger. Ultimately, I used Spectra cord, which is a high tensile strength fiber. Wow, that is way stronger. That would hurt. Dude, what? It broke a bar. At 100 PSI, each cylinder is pulling down with 170 pounds of force. And it was much better, but it still stretched a little. On Mythbusters, Jamie said he used a high tensile strength synthetic webbing, but he wasn't specific with what he used, so I couldn't find it. To pull on the cables, I installed pneumatic cylinders. And normally on my projects, I use double acting pneumatic cylinders, which means air is pumped into both ends of the cylinder and a valve controls it in both directions. This time I used a single acting cylinder, which pulled the finger down and then a spring returned it up. And thank goodness I only tack welded this cylinder bracket because I realized I needed another half inch of stroke on all the cylinders to curl the fingers all the way. I cut the tack welds and lowered the bracket so the larger cylinders I ordered would fit, but I designed the height of the column around the shorter cylinders, which meant that the bigger ones were bottoming out against the base and the gussets. So I had to splice in a section to the column. Before I hook up air to the hand, I wanna talk about the CNC cut parts for this project, which were made possible by this video's sponsor, Send Cut Send. Send Kit Send has been super awesome to work with. I've used them for many of my past projects. They offer laser and CNC cutting for metals, woods, composites, plastics, and they're expanding a ton. They even offer bending, tapping, and now powder coating, which I am super psyched to use on future projects. They have a really slick parts builder on their website too, so you don't even need CAD experience. They have a ton of different shapes to choose from, and then you input your custom dimensions. Their services are amazing. What a time to be alive, where you can have an idea, design and order it in a few minutes, and then a physical part shows up at your door a few days later. It's one of my favorite things ever. Just like the control board that I modeled and had cut out of ABS plastic with holes for heat set threaded inserts. Yep, that's finger number five. I'm pumping the cylinder and then feeling the air blow on my cheek. So I know this one is cylinder number five. Let me walk you through how this system works. Air comes from the compressor to this manifold, which splits it five ways to the five solenoid valves, one for each finger, of course. The control glove has rubber bands that pull on micro switches, again, one for each finger, and that signal goes through these terminal blocks to deliver 12 volts to each valve. Then those valves run air to the pneumatic cylinders. To make the controller, I printed these switch holders and VHB taped them onto the glove. I also added these laser cut cord grip brackets to clean everything up. And then it was time to finally power it up. This is my very first time hooking up air to the hand and controlling it with the solenoids. I'm gonna plug in the battery and then it should be live.
<laughs> no way! Oh, it's breaking itself to bits. <laughs> oh, you've got to see the back side of this thing. Amazing. So it broke off another bar on one of the fingers and all of the cords have stretched out a little bit. So there's some slack. I'm gonna adjust these clevis rod ends, tension them up a little bit, and then we'll go again. I got a grip gauge, let's compare. <laughs> okay, 108 pounds. Let's see what this does. I can only fit three fingers in here. This thing wears a 2XL glove. Oh, it's not reading very well. I don't think I... Ah, I can't grab it with this hand because I'll crush my other hand. Try this. Ah, here we go. 22 pounds, that's not right. I can do better than that. Okay, I'm obviously gonna break this thing. This isn't working. Okay, so it's not very good at gripping stuff. Oh, yes! Yes it is. No, it's not. Toothpaste in three, two, one. What? What? That is the most anticlimactic thing ever. Now that it was looking like a T800, the Tyler Nator 800, I tried putting a glove on it. It's not perfect, still super fun. My patrons got to see the 3D model for this project and hear my thoughts on it weeks ago. So if you're interested in helping me brainstorm ideas and get behind the scenes access to my projects and also help support this channel, please consider becoming a patron. I'll see you on the next one.